welcome to our few views and today we're doing another Hong Kong content review, this time for Video Syndrome's exclusive 2K scan of Wingo Lamb's Burning Paradise. Fantastic. This is a really good slazzy edition. Really loving this cool artwork there, as you can see. Really love the design of it, the colour scheme, this kind of oil painting type of a feature. Uh, the kind of the embossed kind of lettering. Absolutely amazing. This is my very first Vinegar Syndrome purchase. You've got a little sticker there. And Vinegar Syndrome is no stranger to Hong Kong. They are diving into the Hong Kong cinema market, very much competing against the big players like Arrow and kind of Eureka 88 Films. Everyone's diving into it now. Criterion have jumped into that kind of well of kind of Hong Kong cinema goodness. And it's becoming very, very competitive with Region B stuff versus Region A stuff. And who's going to come out first? Who's going to put the best editions? You know, and it comes a case of which label do you want to support, which edition is the best for you, which one is more cost effective. And I discussed this a little bit with the Writing Wrongs video I did a little while back with them releasing Writing Wrongs first and having loads of brand new extras and exclusive 2K scans. And they've also done uh, a bowl of syndrome as well in 4K for some reason. Uh, they've got their um, Iceman Comet already released and so we're still waiting for ours. This has got another couple of weeks before it comes out. So it's becoming very competitive. It's becoming very heated right now. Which one is going to really get released first, which is the best extras, which is the best edition. So it is very, very hot right now. But this one has not got a UK release. This is a exclusive to Vinegar Syndrome's kind of 2K scan uh, with a couple of new extras and the booklet as well and some really great kind of like slanted looking uh, kind of picture quality there, which is really good. Uh, this is the kind of front artwork there. I think this is the original poster and you get, you get the booklet, which is a 12 page booklet, which dives in behind the scenes. You get the disc there and uh, some of the new extras, which is only one new extra really, which is a brand new kind of uh, interview with the bad guy of the film. And that new extra feature is really fantastic because he really dived into kind of why his relationship with Ringo Lamb was so kind of like sustained over the years, after, even after the film was finished. And the fact that he was actually an established painter, he actually is a professional painter that actually has art galleries still to this day. And the fact that he did all the painting work actually in the film in terms of the canvases and actually having the paintbrushes and doing it live kind of thing on camera. Uh, it's really fantastic and really interesting. It adds a bit of kind of authenticity to the actual character itself in terms of the villain, but also kind of adds a little bit of uniqueness also to the performance, which I think is quite fascinating, the fact he could do this, and that is also used within the film quite effectively in terms of his kind of uh, persona and who he thinks of as a god. Just nice to have in the film, he adds a little bit of background kind of knowledge about his experience and his time on set, and the fact he did all of his stunts as well, because he didn't have any stunt doubles that were torn off. It's just a really interesting, insightful extra. And the fact you've got some video archive extras also with Ringo Lamb and some of the actors involved you got a trailer and you've got a video essay which talks about Ringo Lamb's kind of career and his kind of big break being the city on fire and obviously into some financial kind of blows with some of the late 90s films he was doing and uh, if you're familiar with myself also on the channel I have watched about seven Ringo Lamb movies up to this point uh, three of them being Van Damme movies I've watched the three kind of city on fire movies and I've watched I think uh, one or two others here and there's a few more that I still need to check out on the list. And if you've seen my video reviews on the previous Ring of Land movies, you kind of understand my kind of thoughts and opinions of him. I do think he's a great director. I do think he's a very interesting kind of visual style, but I do think some of his films are a bit kind of so-and-so, some a bit half-baked. I do like some of the characterizations. I do like some of the stories, but I do think they're a bit too long or they don't quite work or they don't quite, or they get lost in translation or they start really strong and then kind of just kind of fizzles out. You know, I do think some of his more lesser films um, are some of my favorites. I, I'm a big fan of, you know, uh, Replicant. I think that's a really good film. And I really like his kind of storytelling kind of perspective. I like the way he kind of goes about kind of, you know, nature and nurture and that kind of thing and about characters doing kind of shady things for good reasons, good intentions. And I think there's some interesting kind of moral conflicts within his films. And I think he's definitely came at the right time with obviously City on Fire being the kind of big kind of, you know, into that kind of, you know, better tomorrow kind of, you know, hero bloodshed type movies in a sense. I think he came at the right time, but obviously as time went on during the kind of late 90s, his kind of career kind of fizzled out and he box office draws was very less. And obviously looking at the extras on the edition and the booklet, that became more apparent. And surprisingly, Burning on uh, Burning Paradise was a financial flop, didn't do very well, and kind of was buried a little bit, if I'm being honest. And the fact that I have heard about this film for quite some time, but no easy access, it's not got a good release anywhere in terms of VHS, DVD, it's got a very hard to reach access Blu-ray from Hong Kong. The fact that this is a brand new 2K scan of the edition of exclusive Vinegar Syndrome, the fact that none of the UK kind of markets have kind of touched upon this just as yet. Burning Paradise 
is easily his best film and I am gobsmacked this is not talked about as much. I am gobsmacked this has not got a good release f sit prior to this. What? <laughs> Burning Paradise is absolutely fucking fantastic. <laughs> Burning Paradise, released in 1994, directed by Ring Island, of course. This is very much a change of pace, a very different type of flavour, a different type of beast altogether. His films prior to this, as already mentioned, are very kind of cynical, very kind of nihilistic and very kind of bleak in terms of interpretations of characters. His characters are very sleazy or very much broken people in terms of kind of like the way they approach in terms of the prison system, you know, prison on fire, being like against the, you know, corrupt guards and kind of the prison reform system versus like school on fire, which is a much more kind of dark nature about how you know, our youth are corrupted in terms of going into kind of crime and prostitution and you know how you know teachers are being slashed and killed or that kind of thing and people don't want education anymore the future is so dark and so nasty and i can see why his movies would work for the kind of mid 80s because you know that kind of you know zeitgeist was in the air especially with a lot of the kind of you know blue vengeance based kind of movies which is why it surprised me so much that ringo lamb would do a 90s kind of love letter inspired approach to the kind of shaw brothers kind of format with the classic kind of hero's journey from start to finish you've got kind of flying guillotine weapons you've got over the top kind of kills with decapitations and crazy kind of wild work wushu stunts you've got uh, one liners from the villains which is fantastic and from the grandmasters which is really really funny great characterization some good kind of good feel kind of banter in the spine of like you know iron monkey and that kind of flavor and that kind of feel but also you've got the horror element like you know human lanterns with the kind of creepy kind of temple red lotus temple booby traps and kind of fire and low-key kind of supernatural kind of elements to us you've got a villain which is very unique and very different having his army going out there destroying the kind of shaolin kind of monk temples and you know breaking them kind of thing i'm going to hold you prisoner within my kind of temple and you cannot escape because if you do you know you will get killed from the various kind of booby traps and even the kind of the kind of soldiers and the kind of lieutenants and the kind of subordinates in the film are very much kind of like you know trapped within there also they have to kind of accommodate for him and his kind of desires and what he wants to, for the film to happen he sees himself as a god he's a painter you've got some great wire work action sequences in the film which is really kind of kick-ass and really kind of fun and you know really kind of you know stylistic and just kind of awesome to kind of watch presented on screen you've got some classic kind of betrayals and kind of you know double cross the benefits of being a 90s film you can have a bit more of a scale in terms of your sets in terms of your kind of location within the temple the kind of the deserts and you know like you know the stunt work and all that kind of thing and the explosions the film does have your kick-assery popcorn entertainment at its absolute finest and I was absolutely loving my experience and my time with it and being the fact it's a two-hour movie it's kind of relentless it has great sense of pacing it's very fun and fast paced it doesn't let up for a single moment and even when the film does have a bit of a slow time kind of moment to kind of have characters interact with each other it's really beneficial to where the story is going the film has some great escalation the film really kind of goes for it doesn't kind of let up i was quite surprised where the film was going and the fact that some characters do get killed off quite early on all this leads up to a really kind of fantastic finale and actually ends really goddamn well the fact this film was a box office flop really kind of confuses me why this film didn't reach the kind of the audience that it should have maybe that people were kind of bored of kind of you know period based kind of movies maybe people didn't know what the film was maybe the marketing didn't achieve what exactly what the film was trying to go for this feels so different from a traditional kind of ring or lamb movie compared to his others this feels a lot more packed full of energy a lot more kind of you know life is brought into this and it feels so different from what i'm used to seeing of his work absolutely recommend the brand new video syndrome release this is a region free set despite the fact it does say region a on the blu-ray station itself this works perfectly fine on my ps5 on the um, blu-ray 4k player uh, so this is a region free set guys please go and check this out this definitely is worth a purchase but if you're willing to wait a little bit longer i do think it will come out eventually on one of the kind of your recreated formats uh, during next year 2023 but uh, if you want to get out now guys go and check it out that's my thoughts and opinions on burning paradise what are your thoughts guys please comment down below what is your favorite ring of land movie what is your most underrated kind of you know ring of land movie that you think doesn't get much kind of appreciation i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions guys let's create a discussion so in the meantime and for reviews signing out